Great, thank you. Well, once again, brothers and sisters, I want to just uh, greet you all in the precious name of the Lord. I want to thank you for all being here with us. Um, I've got a, I've got a, a, a message I'm going to minister around a, a scripture, a particular scripture. I know we read all the chapters, which I've done already, but it's a, a particular verse that's often quoted. And it's very, very powerful. And I want to bring that today because it's not just for this ministry. It's for ministries. It's for people. It's not for ministries. It, it's for all of us. It's, it's very, very profound. It's, it's, uh, I was joking just now with Pastor Coral and he said, you're opening with Psalm 119. No, no. It's a short message today. Because it's what, what won't happen where we're going next week. Because there's a lot of people walk a long way. And I've learned that in the mission field, which young Isak is going to learn walking with me, is you don't stand up there and speak for 40 minutes, not there. Because these people have come for food. These people have come for bread. And, and you get up there and I will, be, I will be ministering on an average of two and a half hours. So that's hot work, eh? And it's good work because I love it. But that's what we're going to be doing at that choir that the Lord sent. I'm so blessed with that African choir that's come out of the refugees because they said we need to sing the word of God as well. So that's the music they can care of. I don't have to have a, a speaker or a big band or, you know, that's them. And we've got no lights. That's why we're starting at three o'clock in the afternoon, but it gets a bit cooler and it gets darker about seven. So we really rely on the Lord Jesus Christ for all his, all of what he can uh, put, all he has put out for us already. So I would appreciate that. I just want to open in a word of prayer, please, for this message today. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that we can come together. I thank you for this wonderful ministry that, that's growing. Um, unfortunately, and from my point of view, it's growing around the world where I can see people like Graham on the screen, but I'll, I won't meet him in the flesh unless I go there or he comes here. But Lord, he's a brother in Christ like many others, like Basile and his families and Carl and Eric and Val. And, but Lord, I just thank you that we can encourage one another. I thank you, Lord, for the word that you've given me and gave me on Tuesday, that Father God, that people would take it and understand it and run with it. So, Father God, I give you all the praise and all the glory for everybody that's here on this screen and in this room. May the, the, the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> right. Turn with me, please. In the moment I give this name, you'll know what I'm going to talk about to the book of Nehemiah. Chapter 8, verse 10. And, and at, right at the bottom is, is what this, this word is going to be all about. But I'm going to read the first, I'm going to read the whole verse. I also want to just thank, um, there's, a, there's a lot of um, um, prayer warriors around the world that I know personally. And there's prayer teams around the world. And they've been in touch with us. Because I've asked them to pray. And one in particular was in, in South Africa in Johannesburg. And dear, dear friends called Isaac and I on for an hour um, sometime last week. And they needed to pray. And they felt relevant for us to anoint ourselves on the screen. And then they prayed over us. You know, that, that is so, that, that's, that's serious Christians. Colin and Chrissy are very serious Christians, as we all are, but they, they've served the Lord for a long time. They've walked with me for a long time. They know the dangers and the pitfalls. And that was, I'm just saying, guys, you know, it's, it's not about one man. We always know that because this ministry isn't about one man. It's, a, it's, about, it's about all of us. Okay. So, you know, um, it's saying that I've had for 25 years teamwork. Makes a dream work. And that's a fact. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Nehemiah chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 10. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. 
Do not sorrow. Here it comes. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. She, she, the joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, the, the Bible doesn't talk about happy. Um, yeah, we're going to be happy. I mean, please don't get me wrong. But happy is a worldly thing. Because you get happy and then you get sad. You know, because now somehow it's going to be a miracle today that England will lose that test. Then <laughs> Philip here is not going to be happy. But it's a cricket game. We're not exactly. really worried about this. Yeah, that's right. But, but joy, genuine joy. Yeah, coming to that, yeah, absolutely. That is, that is what God is talking to us about. Gen I have a joy in my heart. I have a joy in my spirit. When this brother on my left takes me to Heathrow tomorrow and he gets me on that plane, I have a joy because I'm in God's will. And I'm going to two people I love who are so desperate. They have lost everything. They have nothing. And I'm coming to bring them joy. In the name of Jesus Christ, it's all I can do. I, I can't take money for 20,000, 30,000 people. I can't take clothing. I can't even take any food. I'm just barely enough food to feed ourselves. What can I give them? Hope in Jesus, joy in Jesus, encouragement in times of tribulation, in times of trials, brothers and sisters. It's the joy of the Lord that gives us the strength. How can we carry on without the joy of the Lord? <clears throat> Just to give you a bit of background about Nehemiah. Now, you know about Nehemiah. He, he built the walls in 52 days miraculous thing that happened but Ezra was the priest Nehemiah was the builder and the governor but it was it was Ezra speaking to the people the high priest and I'm not going to go through the whole book of Nehemiah and Ezra they're close together because they're very serious books about disobedience but the people wept openly when they heard God's laws and realized how far they were from obeying them that's what got them, you see. The spirit touched them. And they started to weep. And I guess started to repent. And then Israel spoke to them. But Ezra told them they should be filled with joy because that day was holy. We, we serve a God, and this is what um, no other religion, no other God in this world can do. The Lord Jesus Christ forgave us. <laughs> he actually forgave us of our sin. So every one of you on that screen and in this room, and, and because we're a bit cramped in here, my two girls, it's my daughters are in the next room. He forgave us of our sins, and, and he doesn't bring it up again. You know, I'm not going to go down the road of forgiveness because we all know forgiveness. But if you keep bringing something up, what I've done five years ago, you haven't forgiven me. man. That means you're in trouble, not me. Okay. Yeah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Are we gonna, we've got about, I've got one, two, three, four scriptures. That's all. Um, go. Right to the back of the Bible, please go to the book of James. Just after the book of Hebrews, keep turning, keep turning. And James, I'm going to read James chapter 1, verse 2. James, the half brother of the Lord Jesus Christ, according to the Bible. Okay. And James, as you know, was the leader of the first early church in the world in Jerusalem. And uh, his end didn't happen to end nicely. James chapter one, verse two. My brother, uh, greetings, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. 
Uh, now, hang on a second. We just spoke about Joy back in old Nehemiah. He, he was, I don't know, a thousand years before. So we're still having trials. They were still having trials. Are we having trials? Does it? Uh, James doesn't say if you face trials, but whenever you face them, you are going to face trials. Let me tell you, people are facing trials on the screen that I don't know about. Not if. You think it's going to be a cakewalk when I get on that plane tomorrow? But by the strength of God. Because <laughs> he goes before us. He makes crooked paths straight. He has prepared those hearts before I was born. James doesn't say if. Remember that now. Let's go back to it. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. It could be health. It could be financial. It could, it could be marriages. It could be health. I don't know. what. It, but, but what do you do? You, you collapse. You all fall down. Like the, the children of Israel did uh, in the time of Nehemiah and Ezra. When they were really disobedient to the laws of God. We're not under the law anymore, so don't get me wrong now. I'm not talking about being under the law. We're under grace. But that's not a license to sin either. Make no error. In fact, I think being under the real grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is a lot tougher than the law. Don't pretend to be happy when you face pain. But to have a positive outlook, consider it pure joy. Because of what trials can produce in our lives. How do you get a testimony? Which we love so much in this ministry. And I love it because I love testifying about the good things of the Lord Jesus Christ. How do you get a testimony? What? By packing up? Throwing the towel in? Walking away? That's not a, that's not a testimony then. Standing. Facing them. Saying I will not be defeated. Cancer flee. Restore our relationships. Well, you're going to run away. If you're going to run away and give it up, well, then you've got no testimony. You can't come and sit on this screen because you've got nothing to say. Have you? You can't really know the depth of our character until we see how people react under pressure. Now, here, here comes the punchline. When the popo hits the fan is when you will see the true metal and the character of a man or a woman. You, you know, many years ago, and I'm not even going to talk about the army because I don't like the flipping army anyway. I don't like, I don't believe in it anyway. I don't like killing people, but when I was in something and one particular guy was a sergeant. And yeah, he had a lot to say, man. He was quite a boykey, this. But the commandant was a personal friend of mine <laughs> because he was a golfer. <laughs> Only because of that, because then I would have been nothing. Just like everybody else in my era that, yeah, right. Nothing, Eric. And I spoke about this guy. And he said, Fergus, blah, 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 blah. And when it happened, he was the first guy to run. Got no testimony, you see. <laughs> you, you, you're going to find out. You're going to find out when it comes to your door. Exactly what kind of character you are. <clears throat> and where is your strength? In man? In a doctor? In a pastor? In a church? In a religion? <coughs> That's not going to help you. Let me tell you it's not going to help you. In the Holy Spirit. That's the only way we're going to stand when it comes. Then you're going to see the metal in the character. That mighty man of God, Peter Marshall, Scotsman. 
went across to America and anyway, uh, Peter Marshall wrote a beautiful book. My wife Catherine carried on when he, he died at, at age of 50 in the pulpit. Just fell down stone dead. Peter Marshall said, I've never forgotten it. When you have a loved one been lowered down into the grave and it's pouring in with rain, it's ice cold, sleet is flowing, are you still going to praise Jesus Christ? Or are you going to cower, cry, and run around? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. He will get us through it. It's by his grace. That is when you see spirit-filled men and women of God. You know, the, the men of the Bible, especially people like Joshua and Caleb and Moses, Abraham, they, were all, they were all human. We know that. But they knew who to trust. They knew who to put their faith in. They knew that when the race is finished, then you go home. If you're in the perfect will of God and he's got a, a mission for you to do, any one of you. What, what did uh, George Whitfield say? Val and I love this. You're immortal on earth till your job is done. I'm paraphrasing. There's a bit more to it than that. That's what George Whitfield said. So, so when you've done what he wants you to do, then that's it. That's time up. You come home to me. But not before then. But these men had the joy of the Lord. They knew who to go to. They were fearful. They were fearful. I mean, David actually ran away from his son, Absalom. Remember that? But he got restored because he trusted in Jesus. <coughs> that's, what I, that's what I want to, to, to really, um, really encourage you, you brothers and sisters, that, that James is telling us very clearly and it's the old heater is getting turned up. Eh? It's getting hotter. And in the old days, oh, well, we'll go and stay there because, you know, it's pretty good there. And, 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 and. Now, now there's nowhere to go because the heat's everywhere. Australia is battling. The UK is battling. Ukraine is battling. South Africa, Africa is battling. Nowhere to run now. Now we're going to make a stand. So, brothers and sisters, before I go on to my next um, scripture, it's not when you have a, 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 a motor accident and you and you 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 bang and dent your Mercedes Benz. Okay, it's it's when it gets real. When it gets through. some people on the screen have been there. I've been there. I'm not talking about my dearest little boy. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about other things that's happened to us in our family. Yeah, real things. It's right, isn't it? But you can't give up. Why can't you give up? Because Jesus Christ didn't give up. And that's what's going to get us through it. That's what's going to get us into where he's waiting for us. That's what's going to happen when, by the grace of God, when I get up there and whoever comes to this meeting, the Lord will help me encourage somebody that's been dropped off the back of a truck, like I saw, dumped, half naked, and left. Yes. Yes, I can now probably only have hot tea and a piece of white bread for three days. But it's something. They've got nothing. How do you preach to people like that? I can't. I need the Lord. Now, it's a serious thing, guys. It's a serious thing. Turn with me to the book of Colossians. <coughs> 
and go to, to, to Colossians, please. And uh, verse 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 24. Chapter 1, verse 24. Now, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you. This is Paul speaking now. And fill up my flesh what is lacking to the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. We are the church. Did you know that? Um, that lovely young man, uh, his name was Pablo. We were standing outside the uh, testing center because Joe and I were a bit early and um, started talking to this youngster. And he said, you know, what are you doing here for? So I said, I'm traveling and you now I've got a new job. That's why I have to be tested and blah, 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 blah. And before I could say anything, Joe said, are you a Christian? And he said, well, I'm, I'm another religion. We said, well, somebody asked you. And he gave his life to Jesus before we went in. Um, okay, let me just move on here. Paul could be saying that suffering is unavoidable in bringing the good news of Christ to the world. So is suffering bringing the good news to the rest of the world but not being able to get a a parking place close enough to the front entrance of the church because it's raining. Is that suffering? Or well, going into church and the music's wrong. Going into the church, the guy preached too long or too short. Going into the church and all the guy spoke about was money. Is that su that's not suffering. Well, it's not what Paul suffered. Of all the apostles, they, all, they were all martyred except John, of course. Paul suffered the most, in my opinion. He was bitten by a gnocca. For those that don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about a snake. He, he was shipwrecked. He was beaten. He was sick. Naked. People left him. They treated him badly, man. joy of the Lord had to be Paul's strength because how, who would want to do that but he says yeah let's go through it again now I rejoice in myself he rejoices in his sufferings he's happy <sighs> okay for for you and fill up my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body which is the church but this suffering can only be endured joyfully because it changes lives and brings people into God's kingdom. Yeah. Eutychus fell out the window, by the way, because Paul was preaching so long. Fell four stories down, boom. And then Paul went down, lay him and raised him up again. What, what, what I'm trying to say is, if your faith costs you nothing, it's worth zippo. It's worth nothing. That's a fact. Are you, are you, none of you are. So I'm not talking, if I'm talking about you, well, this is Fergus Buckingham. This is how I preach. It's okay for Fergie to go. It's, you know, that's, that's great. He can go there. And maybe he can get a little bite from something and, you know, that's okay. I'll pray for you. <laughs> oh, well, thanks. I do need prayer. We need prayer. I told you guys before that this this country I'm I'm living in, it's called the UK. I'm living in London. I don't think I don't think Africa was evangelized by any other country greater than this in the 1800s to 1900. Scottish, Welsh, English, Irish. They went out. The average lifespan was three months. And they died of malaria. Basically, it was always malaria. But they kept coming. Mothers and, and fathers said goodbye to their daughters. A lot of women went there. A lot of women got on the boat. Three months. That's the average lifespan of a missionary in the 1800s. But they kept going. 
and because they kept going, because of the unmarked graves I've seen personally tramping through Africa. We say a special prayer over those graves. And the Lord said to me, Fergus, don't worry about them. Because they're sitting in the front seat in the great hall. <laughs> yeah, the front seat. The ones we don't know about. All the big names, they're going to be back there. I'm not saying all of them, please. I'm not. There's a price for being identified with the Lord Jesus. There's a price. Paul mentions the suffering that Christians must face. Okay. Nothing we suffer, however, can compare to the great price that the Lord paid to save us, which gives us the hope and joy to spend eternity in heaven with him. That's where the joy comes now. That's where the joy starts to come in and kick in. Brothers, I, I want to I, I just say as, as I move on from Colossians and I want to go to Romans, go backwards. Romans, 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 Romans. Right after the book of Acts, guys, go to chapter 8, and verse 18. And here's Paul again, you see. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be re revealed to us. Um, how much are we prepared to lay down to serve Jesus. How, how much more will you rejoice when it really gets tough, really, really gets hard going? Because we know, we only know that the joy comes from Jesus Christ. And that's where we're going to be at. When, when, when we come to the end of our tether, when you, 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 you know those, those early martyrs, those Christians, those brothers and sisters that were put into the amphitheaters in Rome, they were singing songs when, when they opened up those gates for the leopard and the lion. And they were singing songs, rejoicing. One of the fathers in the UK, I don't know if it was Tyndall or one of the fathers, he was at the stake. In the center of London, where I'm sitting right now. And he had a youngster next to him. We didn't run away from him. It was probably not Tyndall. It was some Tyndall died, I think, in, in Geneva. But anyway. And they started to put the flame in. And he said, young man, be encouraged. Tonight we sup with the Lord. Yeah. Be encouraged. Tonight we sup with the Lord. Not screaming and crying, or oh, let me out of here, please. I'll recant and I'll deny Jesus Christ. And I really didn't mean what I'd said. And I'm sorry that I preached like I did against the XYZ. No, 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 no. Tonight we sup with the Lord. He was rejoicing. That's what we're gonna have. Man, if we if we whatever this this trip has cost financially, time, uh, people giving up things so that we can get there, if one soul one soul stands up and says, I received Jesus Christ. Well, it's been worth it, hasn't it? That's what it's about. But we're not going to have one soul. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Joel 3.14 is what Jesus Christ gave me before I agreed to go with David. They have to make a decision. We have to make a decision. Are you going to be joyful in tribulation and trials? Or are you going to be like the world? That's what we're coming down to. Or me, my house, I choose to rejoice because of the strength of the Lord. Only because in my own flesh, I can't when things happen 
that uh, are untoward will come against us. So, brothers and sisters, as we close now, please grasp this. The joy of the Lord is our strength. It's only, it's only him. Everything else is superficial and lasts for a time. And it goes away. But when we really come to him, because the next morning, You'll weep at night, but the Bible says joy comes in the morning. Amen. Yeah. Let us close in prayer and uh, we'll move on with the next part of this ministry. Lord, I thank you for this morning. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. I, I thank you, Father, that all the saints, all the apostles, all the disciples <clears throat> of yesterday and today, stepped out, went forward, and rejoiced when trials and tribulations came because they knew the joy of the Lord. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Joe.